change the notes, how do you keep a part interesting in a mix? This is the problem we face as both producers, songwriters, mixers, everyone's going to face it. How long are you going to keep the same notes? How are you going to make them interesting? How are you going to play it? Where are you going to put it in the mix? And we're going to look at just some solutions given that we can't change the notes. So mostly from a mixing perspective, but it in some way relates to basically every position along the chain. Take for example this flute. We have here a basic flute. It sounds like this. Leaving the flute as it is right now wouldn't be a very great idea because right now it's fighting for space with other elements in the mix. So it makes a lot of sense for us to want to sort of just mix it out of the way. And to go a little bit further, we should probably transition it out of the way because at the beginning, we want it to be forward and to, you know, it's a new sound, it's interesting, but we want it to eventually move out of the way. So for this, we're going to use a simple reverb. Now, if we just left the reverb on, it's not going to sound so great all the time because we don't want this effect on necessarily right at the beginning, at least not on all the time. So let's automate the reverb on so that we can give a sense of the flute moving out of the way and sort of guide the listener to what we want them to hear. Now you could go through the track and automate the reverb on and off according to where you think the listener should be focusing. So if you want something more in focus, you know, you have less verb on it, you push it a little bit forward, less focus, you push it a little bit back. But we can build on this because just adding a reverb is cool, but we can sort of break more expectations. And we can do this by adding some tone control in the front, specifically a kind of unusual tool. We can add an OTT before the reverb. Now keep in mind the OTT is only ever gonna be on when the reverb's on. So in this way, it acts sort of like a space control where if we emphasize the highs with the OTT, which is a compressor, uh, it's going to change our perception of the reverb. And likewise, if we emphasize the lows, it's going to change our perception of the reverb, hence changing the sense of space. So that as it moves, not only does it move through the verb, it might move into a very unusual sounding verb, one that's got characteristics we're not quite used to hearing in a standard reverb. Now keep in mind, if you're gonna use a compressor beforehand, we are going to need to do some gain adjustment. Otherwise, when we turn our effect on, we're gonna have a large change in gain and that's gonna screw with everything. So what we're gonna do is first play it with the effect completely on and then adjust the gain till it sounds like the same level as if the effect were off. Then what you're going to do is you're going to automate to that level uh, so that when the transit knob gets turned on, that macro knob, it'll transition the gain down appropriately and you get a, a flat level the whole time. You no longer have this weird level jump. Unless you like the level jump, by all means, you can keep it there. Uh, but in general, you're going to want to do some gain matching and this is how you would do it. After this, we now have our interesting image. We've got some cool ways to vary the spectral image, and we're doing it with a tool that you wouldn't normally think to do it with. So this is gonna lead to some cool results, and you can vary this through your track. But the next thing you're probably gonna wanna consider is how wide or narrow your image is. So we've got a reverb, but just because the reverb has a long tail or a short tail, doesn't mean it has to be wide or narrow. This is a completely separate thing for you to consider. And so we could stick a, a spread control after the reverb. 
And if we have a very wide sound, we're gonna get that huge image, leaving a lot of room in the middle. If we have a very narrow sound, it tends to make things sound smaller, but not necessarily smaller in terms of the space. It could be like a long tube, for example, is a narrow space that's still very large. So we can evoke these sorts of uh, feelings. Now, something we can do here with the spread, the spread has a unique ability to sort of just average out big changes that happen in either one of the speakers. And so we can grab an effect that typically is a little heavy handed, namely the auto pan. So auto pan will just move the sound from one speaker to the other, but typically it does this very aggressively. You could bring the mix way down, but I find that I like to have the auto pan just after the reverb, but just before, actually you could put it before the reverb and that could be cool. But I like to put it after and just before the spread. And then I use the spread to sort of tame the auto pan. It's just an extra control. It gives us a little more finite ability to get some variation between the two speakers, but not so much that it's a distraction. Now we can have a little bit more fun with it. So we've done sort of the basic mixing, we've sort of customized and gotten some cool images out of our sound, but maybe we'll do something on a phrase level. So for example, we have these longer notes that the flute plays. What if we did something cool with that? The first ideas that come to my mind are if they were to sound a little bit swirly. And for that, when I say swirly, I'm thinking of flangers and choruses. So let's grab a flanger and a chorus and automate those things on. Now there's no hard and fast rules to how you automate. If, they, if you automate it on very suddenly, it's gonna have a different effect than if it comes up slowly and then stops suddenly, and it'll be another effect if you have it automate on and off smoothly. So just experiment. You're, in this case, you're matching a phrase. So it's gonna be specific to the musical phrase you're working with. Now the flanger is pretty cool. I think we could add something even a little bit more extreme. I think we could add a layer. And for this, since we're not allowed to add any notes, let's add on a pitch shifter. So the pitch shifter, we're going to have it add on with a very low mix level so that it doesn't overpower the original sound. We just want it to be a supporting layer. And let's bring in an octave up. So we're going to set it an octave up and this pitch shifted version is gonna come in just on those high notes after the chorus and the flanger and gonna add another layer. Now this is a little bit heavy handed, even with the mix at the stage that it is. So we're gonna add a reverb to again, smooth it out. I like to use reverb and spread and in these sort of spatial tools to just sort of smooth out things that I think just sound a little abrupt or, or sort of poke out of the mix in a way that I don't like. I don't want people paying attention to that. So in this case, we're gonna try and just sort of edge it out a little bit. So there you have it. There's some basic ways you can take a sound that's repeating. It's the same notes the whole time, but now it's way more interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for future videos, and have a blessed day.